My friends, you're going to learn how to draw any Lewis structure, virtually any Lewis structure. It's pretty sick. You might spend hours in class, but I'm going to show you in like 15 minutes. This is like the best method that you'll find. Uh, I hope you like it. I spent a lot of time on this to simplify things. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so first we want to attach the atoms, step one. Step two, you want to add the electrons. Step three, you want to deal with the charges or add the charges. And then lastly, you want to deal with the central atom. So AACC are your steps here. This will give you a valid Lewis structure. But after this, you may be asked to draw a resonance structure or resonance structures. And that's a different beast in itself. So we're not going to cover this portion in this beginner video here. So let's start. We want to attach the atoms. And there's a few criteria. We want to determine which atom is the central atom. And there's an acronym here, LALESS. <laughs> uh, the central atom is often left or down on the periodic table. So here's our example. If we look on the periodic table for phosphorus and oxygen, phosphorus is right here. It's further to the left and it's down a bit from oxygen. So it's either left and or down. Uh, so it fits the bill there. It's also written usually left in the molecular formula that we see. If you've talked about electronegativity, it's usually the one that has the lowest electronegativity and supports the most number of bonds. And all the other atoms are attached to the central atom. Each line represents two electrons. Okay, in this case here, we actually start with an H. And if the formula starts with an H, then the H goes to an O. So we'll look at the other ones, so carbon and oxygen. And in the molecular, or in our periodic table, carbon is further to the left than oxygen. So it's, it's less electronegative, it can support more bonds. So carbon is the central atom. And if the formula starts with an H, the H is bonded to an O. If there were two H's, then we'd have one H to each O, three H's, there'd be one H to each O, uh, each three O's, things like that. Okay, and then again, we connect them with lines, and each line represents two electrons. You could do two dots as well instead of a line. In this case, we have we don't have a single central atom. Now, we have two central atoms, nitrogen or oxygen. On the periodic table, nitrogen is further to the left than oxygen, so nitrogen is the central atom, but since there's two of them, it's like they're both a central atom. They're bonded together where we have two electron, two oxygens for each nitrogen. In this case, you may have a situation where it's written, it's like a line here. And in this case, you just connect the atoms as you see them. So carbon is, it's like we have our own uh, central atom. So we have three hydrogens bonded to this carbon, two hydrogens bonded to this carbon, and the carbons bonded to the oxygen. Uh, so we just kind of write it as we see it with the carbons bonded together to make a backbone. And it's like each carbon serves as, it, as its own central atom in this case. You also may come up situations where it, it may be hard to know which is the central atom potentially. Uh, here we have xenon, oxygen, and fluorine. Now xenon is written to the left in the formula. Uh, but if we look on our periodic table, Xenon is down here. It's not further to the left compared to oxygen or fluorine. It's further to the right, but it is further down. And these noble gases can support the most number of bonds for anything that they're attached to. It's also the least electronegative if you've talked about electronegativity. So it does fit this one right here. Uh, so just based on the assessment of which one, that, which boxes does it check the most of, xenon will be the central atom. And everything else is attached to the central atom. Another situation here, sulfur, carbon, or nitrogen, which one's central? Well, it looks like sulfur because it's written to the left here. Uh, but if we look at our periodic table, carbon is further to the left. Sulfur might be down, um, but carbon here will be the one that fits the bill. It's also the least electronegative. So some of these, you just need to kind of work through problems to get used to it. Uh, and, but we'll have carbon as the central atom here with the other atoms attached to it like that. Okay, so that's our first step. <laughs> so one of the most important ones. This one, this is an easy step. We wanna add the electrons. And to add electrons, we first need to count how many electrons to add. So if we look at this case first, HCO3 minus, and we do the first step, we have the H bonded to an O and everything else bonded to the central atom. We need to count the electrons using the periodic table. So we have an H, C, and an O. H is here has one electron, we start from the left and count. We just start at H, that's one right there. Now for carbon, we 
look at the row, the period that it's on, start from the left, and we count till we get to carbon. One, two, three, four. We counted four, so there's four electrons around carbon, four valence or outer electrons. Oxygen is here, we start from the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. We counted six, so there's six electrons around each oxygen, valence electrons, times three oxygens. Now, this is how many electrons we would expect there to be. Valence electrons expect there to be on each atom. But since this is charged, there's actually one more electron than what we'd expect there to be. So we add one there because of this negative charge. If this is a positive charge, we would subtract one because it has one less electron. So if we add all this up, it should come to 24. I think 24, yep. Yeah. And we need to add those electrons to our structure. So we do that starting with the outer atoms to make octets. So see this oxygen here? It has two electrons associated with it. One, there's two electrons in a bond. Now, we, to make an octet, we need eight electrons surrounding it. So we'll add six more electrons. And this oxygen now has a complete octet. We can't add any more electrons. So we go to the next one. And this, this is the same. We add six more. We now have an octet here. Can't add any more electrons. And we'll do the same thing to this oxygen. We'll add an octet. There's four electrons around this oxygen here, two in each bond. So we need to add two four more. And now this oxygen has a complete octet. And we've actually ran out of electrons. The hydrogen, we never add electrons to that because it can't support more, uh, more bonds, more electrons. So that's our 24. If we look at this example here, we'll go through it. The xenon, oxygen, and fluorine one. We have xenon in the center, and we need to count how many electrons to add. If we look at our periodic table, xenon's here. Start at the left. One, two, skip the transition metals. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we expect there to be eight electrons associated or around the xenon, valence electron. Oxygen has six as before. And then fluorine has seven. If we look at the periodic table, here's fluorine. Come from the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fluorine has seven. And there's two of them times two. If we add that all up, we get 28 electrons that we need to add. So we'll start with the outer atoms. Doesn't matter which one we start with. We'll start with the oxygen here. Remember, there's two here in this bond, and we've got a four more octets, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll form another octet with this fluorine, and then another octet. So there's two in the bond, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you count up all these electrons, two per bond, plus all of them, you'll get 24. That means we have four more electrons to add. We can't add any more to the outer atoms because they already have an octet. They won't accept more electrons. So the remaining electrons will go to the central atom. One, two, three, four. Okay, third one. This one's not too hard either. It's pretty easy just to determine the charge on the atom. And it's a simple equation here. The charge on the atom is the expected electrons minus the owned electrons. So let's look at the oxygen here. All of these oxygens are going to be uh, it's the same right now. So we expect there to be six electrons based on the periodic table. Here's oxygen. We start on the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we expect there to be six. How many does it own? Well, it owns these six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. But in this bond, a bond is made up of two electrons. One electron is owned by the oxygen. The other electron is owned by the phosphorus. So in terms of owned electrons, this oxygen owns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven electrons. So its charge is negative one, the way we've written it, negative one. All of these other oxygens are negative one because they're the same. Now for the phosphorus, the charge is going to be the expected minus the owned. Here's phosphorus, start from the left. One, two, three, four, five. We get to five, so we expect there to be five. However, how many are there? Well, one from each bond, it owns three. There's only three owned electrons on the phosphorus. So five minus three is two. So its charge is plus two. Okay, that's our third step. Finally, oh, one more, sorry. Uh, we got the xenon one. Uh, so oxygen here, 
uh, is expected minus zero. And this is minus one as we did before. So I won't I won't redo that one. Uh, let's do the fluorine. We expect there to be seven. Here's fluorine. Start from the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven minus how many does this fluorine own? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then one from the bond, seven. So seven minus seven, zero. So the fluorines are not charged. What about the xenon? We expect there to be eight. Start from the periodic table, start from the left. One, two, skip the transition metals, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we expect there to be eight. Minus how many does it own? Well, it owns one from each bond. So that's three, plus these non-bonding electrons, four, five, so there's seven. 8 minus 7, so that's 1, plus 1. So the charge on this xenon is plus 1. In our last step, we need to deal with the central atom. And if the central atom is, then it must obey the octet rule. Otherwise, we want the owned electrons to equal the expected electrons. So here's an example. We have HCO3 minus, and if we go through the first three steps, then we're left with something like this. Now, carbon is the central atom, so it must obey the octet rule. Currently, it doesn't. There's two electrons in each bond, so there's two, four, six electrons around this carbon. There needs to be eight. And see how it's positively charged? Well, think of a positive charge as like a hole here where it has doesn't have enough electrons. So it needs electrons from something that has an excess amount of electrons. Not this oxygen, because it's not charged, it's neutral. But this oxygen right here is negative one, and the negative charge means it has an excess amount of electrons. It's kind of like a pile of dirt. It has an excess amount of dirt. So we're going to fill the hole and move the excess amount of charge to the positive charge here. So we'll take two electrons from this oxygen, and I'm just going to take these two because it looks nice that way. And I'm going to make a double bond here and going to get rid of these charges at the moment here. Okay, so we have took those two electrons and we created a bond. So we're going to make double and triple bonds to make this octet rule here. And now this this carbon obeys the octet rule. There's two, four, six, eight, eight electrons, four bonds. So we now have the octet rule. The octet rule in this oxygen is obeyed. And for charges, this oxygen is not charged. There's one, two, three, four, six owned electrons. We expect there to be six, so there's no charge here. Same thing with this carbon. It owns four, one from each bond. We expect there to be four based on the periodic table. So this is a valid Lewis structure as it is. We didn't change this oxygen, so it still has a negative charge. Now, if there is a charge on your on your molecule, your ion, then often teachers want you to write it in square brackets. So we take the charge, rather than putting it on a specific atom, like to put your whole structure in square brackets and put the charge up there, which indicates that the charge is spread out throughout this molecule here. So here's another example where we have the xenon OF2, XeOF2. A xenon's the central atom, so we don't want to obey the octet rule. We want the owned electrons to equal the expected electrons. Now, how many electrons does xenon own? Well, there's one from each bond, one, two, three, plus these non-bonding ones, four. So there's seven owned, seven owned. And how much do we expect? Well, we expect there to be eight based on our periodic table when we count from the left. It owns seven. We expect there to be eight. It needs an extra electron. It's going to, and it's positively charged, so we can tell that. And we need to, we're going to grab those electrons from this negative charged uh, oxygen here. So again, we're going to remove these two electrons. We'll remove the charges as well. And those two electrons go into here to make a bond between the xenon and the oxygen. Now, the xenon has eight owned electrons and it expects to have eight electrons, so we've satisfied this criteria here. We've also gotten rid of the charge if we recount the charge on here, and this is our, our Lewis structure for this one. And finally, it's nice to check your work. Did you incorporate the correct number of electrons? Did you add them right? Did you, did you obey the octet rule for the outer atoms? Do you have negative charges on the outer atoms, if possible, because those outer atoms are more electronegative? And the central atom rule, are you obeying the octet rule for carbon and nitrogen if it's the central atom? Otherwise, the owned equals the expected, ideally. Okay, so this is going to get you by. 
through like the 95 percent 90 95 percent of all the cases you'll encounter there's a couple subtleties that you should check out my next video where i've gone through a, a whole onslaught of different lewis structures that i've drawn for you i hope it's helped you i hope it's been giving you some value if it does then consider liking the video as it motivates me to make more and i'll see you in the next one cheers